Welcome to this week's Decision Desk HQ 2022 election forecasting model, where we use our proprietary model to forecast the outcome this November of every single seat in the House and the Senate of the United States, and of course, which party is going to win the majority in both. I'm Dr. Liberty Vittard, and we are two weeks away from Election Day. We've seen a significant shift in the environment this week towards the GOP, so let's dive into this week's model. If you've been following our video updates, then you know that our model has been showing a 50-50 Senate for all but one week when we had Democrats winning 51 seats. So we still have a 50-50 Senate as the most likely outcome, but the probability of that has dropped significantly. Last week, we gave the Democrats a 61% chance of retaining their majority through VP Harris's tie-breaking vote, but this week it is only a 54% chance. That is tiny. That's the Democrats' worst showing in our model since July 25th when we had the GOP at a 51-49% probability of winning the majority. So this is huge news for the Republicans this week running up to election. The trend has been moving in the Republicans' direction since their low point of only a 32% chance of taking control of the Senate, which was on October 9th. So what's driving this huge change for the GOP? We have polling in several key races, fundraising of course, and really an increased strength in the generic ballot. We only have two toss-up races this week, which is enormous. Nevada remains the GOP's best chance of a pickup with former AG Adam Laxalt having a 53% chance of unseating Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto, which is huge for him. In Pennsylvania, John Fetterman still has a 53% chance of flipping the state for the Democrats, which really isn't that much. It's very close. Um, one oddity of this race is we've never had a poll showing Republican Dr. Mehmet Oz leading. Never until this week. The poll from WIC Insights has Oz up by 4.5%. There were two other polls showing Fetterman with a lead, but this is the first time we've had Oz up in any. Generally, the DHQ polling average shows Fetterman with a 2% lead, which is not much. Other Senate races not moving their rating, but moving towards Republicans include Arizona, New Hampshire, and Georgia, potentially because of Herschel Walker showing at the recent debate. Let's move over to the House. The GOP chances of taking the majority increased 2% from 77% to 79%. Our mean seat projection remains at 231 to 204 in favor of the GOP. That's another one seat gain for the GOP due mainly to an increase in the DDHQ generic ballot average from Republican 1.3% to Republican plus 1.8%. We have 18 seats in the toss-up pile this week. Most notable among them is the Alaska at large seat, which moves back to toss up from Lean Democrat, which is going to be a super interesting seat to keep watching through November 8th. Beyond that, there are 21 seats that lean to one party or the other, 10 lean to the Democrats, and 11 lean Republican. You can see the full list on our website, which is linked right below here. That's going to do it for this week um, with lots of changes happening. If you're enjoying these videos, please give it a like, then subscribe to our channel and make sure to sign up on the bell for notifications when we post one of these looks at our model or one of our primary night preview videos, the next of which will be happening on election day, November 8th. If you have any questions you'd like us to address in a future video about our forecast or modeling in general, please just leave them in the comments below and we'll absolutely do our best to answer them. Until next week where we're one week away from elections, I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, professor of data science. Thank you so much for watching.